What's going on ladies and gentlemen? So we're back here with the Chevy Cruze. I told you we were going to do these drums and that's what we're going to do. I hope you can see all right. I'm not about to turn on those halogen lamps. It is already hot out here and those things are going to just bake me to death. So we're going to jump into this. This shouldn't be too difficult, but I've said that before and uh, been proven wrong. So let's hope that everything goes smoothly over here. We're going to start with a T30. We're going to take out this Torx bit set it to the side and then we're going to take a hammer and we're going to tap it around the perimeter of the drum to help loosen things up and you don't want to breathe in this brake dust guys so don't breathe in this stuff All right, all that dust is flying around, so you want to let that dust settle a little bit before you get back into it. I'm actually standing about 15 feet away from the camera. So we're going to let that dust settle, and I'll come back in here, and if we're lucky, we'll be able to pull it right off. If we're not lucky, we'll have to get a pry bar in there and pry the sucker off. All right, so we're going to... Uh, come on. It's, it's trying. Doing better than the other side was. And it's hanging up. Yeah, she's hanging up on the brakes now. On the shoes, so sometimes that happens. You just gotta get in here and kinda pry it. There she goes. Just go around the perimeter and help it off. You shouldn't have to, uh, shouldn't have to get too crazy with it. Jeez, well this sucker is really on there. Almost makes me wonder if the uh, if the emergency brake is adjusted improperly. Cause I mean I've had them on here tight before, but not like this. All right, Let's see if we can get this off by hand now. There we go. And there's all that brake dust in the bottom of there. Let's get this out of the way. So I was hoping we weren't going to have to use these bright lights here, but unfortunately it looks like there's no choice. Otherwise you guys ain't going to be able to see any of this. So first thing I'm going to do is hit all this with brake cleaner. Try to get all this dust, nastiness out of here. It cleans up real easy. Now the brake shoes on this actually aren't bad. They're really not. They're still in pretty good condition, but We've got squealing from the back, so we're just gonna replace the shoes. We're gonna replace the drums. And we're gonna make sure to grease up the contact points because that will definitely cause a whole lot of squeaking and squealing. And customers that are renting this car don't wanna hear it. So the first thing you do, now that you've got this all cleaned up and it looks decent, you want to make sure you take a picture or something. Take your phone, snap a picture where all this hardware goes because you've got a spring under here, you got your e-brake cable over here, you got your pins and your caps over here, you got your uh, e-brake adjustment right here, you got another spring here. It's very important that you got this little tab right here that adjusts it. You want to make sure you know where all of this stuff goes so that you can put it back. So I'm going to take my own advice here, even though I've got it on video, and I am going to snap a quick picture of exactly how this looks. There we go. And now we can go ahead and start taking it apart. Now they make a tool kit to do this and I've had it before and eh, I didn't really feel like it did me a whole lot of good. Um, you got to take all these springs off. Now I typically, honestly, you can take this spring off right here. It's going to take some force. Once you get this spring off, you should be able to take these caps and springs off here. And this whole thing should kind of come out, but it's probably going to want to fall apart as soon as you get it off of these, uh, these guide pins here. Uh, otherwise, you could take the springs off individually, pull out all the hardware. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. So I'm going to grip it real good with some strong pliers here. There we go. And this spring comes out just like that. Now at this point, I'm going to take off this little piece right here, the e-brake adjuster, and I'm going to see if we can pull off the e-brake adjuster right here. That's it. We want to keep all this stuff in order. 
so that we know how it goes back together. And now you can grab hold of these springs. Be careful because these things are these things are loaded, man. And they will uh, they will shoot out at you. Believe you me. Ask me how I know. We're almost there. Come on. Ugh. These suckers are these suckers are on tight. Yeah, they may be slightly seized up. There we go. There we go. Take your spring and your little cap, sit it to the side. Take out your guide pin, like so. And same thing with this one. Just make sure you're holding on to it good. There we go. And there it goes. Just like I said. <laughs> It'll probably all want to fall apart on you. So as long as we didn't lose our little spring that was attached to the bottom, we'll be all right. But it looks like the spring flew off. All right, next step, cleaning some more. And we got to make sure before we install the new shoes, we can press this wheel cylinder. Make sure we clean up all the contact points. I'm just going to use my, my drill on this. Same thing down here. And then hit it with the carb cleaner again or brake clean, whatever you're using. And do the same thing to the other side. All right, I'm not gonna lie. So far, this is going far too easy. Taking it apart's the easy part though. Putting it back together, oh, that's when things tend to go wrong. So let's see if we can knock this out quickly efficiently easily because that would just make my day but i'm sure you guys know nothing works out that way all right so this shoe has to fit into this e-brake and then we have to get it adjusted so that it fits up here then we're going to take this shoe and get it fitted right here but we can't do that yet guys and no i didn't forget because we have to grease the contact points first. So to do that, I went to AutoZone, oops, about fell, and got me some synthetic brake and caliper grease. Same stuff I used the other day on this car, and literally, don't be afraid of it, man. Use liberally on any contact point for your brakes, including where your springs go. Believe it or not, those springs can make noise too. So just get that grease all over anywhere that your uh, shoes could potentially ride. Just like that. Nice and greased up. And do the other side. And now we should be good to install our shoes. But like I said, that always doesn't go according to plan. So what I'm gonna to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to keep this spring hooked on the bottom. I don't know if we'll be able to do it that way or not. Hook your e-brake right here. And we're gonna set this shoe right in its happy little home. And it looks like we might be able to get away with this. Yeah, 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 all right. Now, all we have to do, <laughs> this is where things get fun, boys. If you've ever done, uh, if you've ever done drum breaks before, you know what I'm talking about. You, you gotta get your guide pin in, you gotta get this all lined up, everything's gotta come together just perfectly, otherwise things fall apart, blow apart, and you end up with a big mess on your hands. Which is why I've said it before and I say it again, I really hate drum breaks, truly. But we'll see. All right, we got our little pin in. That's, that's kind of step one. Step two is being able to hold that pin 
in there while being able to get this on here. And good luck with that. I've had pretty poor luck doing this. What you really need is the, your, uh, your pliers and even they don't, yeah, see, they're slipping, they're slipping. Let's turn the pin straight up and down to the 12 o'clock position and see if that will make any difference here. Come on. Yeah, this is fun, guys. A lot of fun. This is why I love, 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 love drum brakes. Like I said, there is a tool for this, and, and I, I really should be. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, so it's worth pointing out that I actually have this kit, and I just, I don't use it because, quite honestly, I've never had any luck with it. Now, we literally just lost the cap. It flew across the shop. I don't know where it is. I'm going to have to go buy another one. But uh, one of these little tools right here should be sufficient to prevent your cap from flying off like that. Now, I don't know for sure which one of these is the right one for the job, and that's going to be too big. I can already tell you that. That's not going to fit at all. We'll try this one right here. This seems to fit a little bit better. Straight up and down. Well, it'd help if I had it turn the right damn direction, wouldn't it? There we go. There we go. Hey! Look what happens when you use the right tool for the job. Look how easy that was. The problem is I lost the other cap. I'm going to keep looking for it, but chances are I'm going to have to go to AutoZone and buy another one. All right, so 30 miles round trip for this little piece right here. Uh... And we, we got the piece that I lost. I should have been using the right tool to begin with. It literally fits in there nice and easy. Flip it upside down and just uh, it drops in one way or another. There we go. That way, right there. And then it won't, uh, it won't fall out on you. That's how you're supposed to do it. Unfortunately, I tried to take a shortcut and I paid for it. So let's get back to work and uh, let's get this thing installed. All right, we're going to put our guide pin through the back here just like we did a little while ago get it in there we got it in about the 12 o'clock position about i'm gonna put our little spring back on here and we're gonna try to line all this up Uh oh it slipped well that's bad because this thing could pop off at any damn moment Ugh. there we go okay good 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 so even with the right tools it doesn't always work out the way you want it to all right round three or four <laughs> let's uh let's try this again damn it there we go we got it don't freak out it's going to take you a minute to get all this stuff in here. There's lots of little pieces that have all got to be lined up just right. It puts your little adjusting clip back in here, and it fits right down there. And now, now you can slide this up in here and then try really, really hard. I like to grab it down at the end by the spring and pull it just like that. Congratulations, you've successfully installed brake shoes. Go have a beer. All right, next comes our big old drum here. You wanna make sure, what did I drop? I don't know. You wanna make sure you clean the inside of this drum with brake clean first. They put a protective coating over this to uh, keep it from rusting. So once you got everything lined up, you wanna make sure you have the spot for your uh, Torx bit, your Torx nut or whatever to go back in there. There you go. Now this spins real easy, so what we're going to want to do is probably adjust the e-brake out just a little bit until you can feel a slight bit of drag on here. So I'll probably have to get a screwdriver and do that. 
Then again, maybe that's what this little doodad is for right here. Boy, that little brake kit I got is amazing, isn't it? Slowly, slowly adjust it out. We don't want to go too far with it. And we'll try it again. And when we feel a slight bit of drag, see right there, that's actually too much too tight so we've got too much on it so we're going to want to turn it backwards loosen her up some there we go let's take her back a bit And we'll try it again. And eventually when we feel just a slight bit of drag on it, we'll know we've got it right. Right there. That's it. You don't want it to spin completely freely, but you don't want it to be bound up either. So she spins, there's a slight bit of drag on it. And that's exactly what we want. Now you can go in and uh, put your little Torx bit back in here. Congratulations, folks. Aside from a few hiccups, we got her done. I figured if we went this far, might as well show you how this brake system works. This power bleeder from Motive Products. I'm gonna say this right now, it's the first time I've ever used it. I bought a gallon of DOT3 Prestone brake fluid and we've got everything hooked up. We've got the GM adapter right here and everything seems to be going all right. Looks like we may be leaking just a tad bit somewhere over here. But what's really concerning me is we seem to be leaking brake fluid from behind this this uh this gauge right here it's definitely leaking down the front that's not something i expected but anyway basically you just hook this up to your car fill it with brake fluid pump it up to 25 or 30. then you go and you start at the furthest end of your car and you just start cracking open the bleeder valves like so and you see the fluid running down in there you can see how dark this fluid was i mean it's very very dark and nasty and now you can see the hose, it's nice and clear. That's what you want. That's the kind of brake fluid color you wanna see coming out of it is fairly clear fluid. And then you just lock it up and you go back, you pump it up again, and you just do this with every single wheel until you've got clear brake, <laughs> until you got clear brake fluid coming out of all of them. I'll show you what I mean here. You just take this and you just pump it up, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it get this gauge up to uh, 25 or 30. It's gonna take a while. You're gonna be pumping on this for a minute. But this is the easiest way to do it when you don't have someone to sit there and pump the brakes for you. There we go. We got it almost to 30. We lock the T in place here. See where that's at? We got good pressure on it, fresh fluid. And I'm just gonna keep doing this to the whole uh, so the whole brake system until I'm convinced that we have nothing but fresh, clean fluid in the reservoir and the lines. All right, we got it done. Honestly, that one went a lot easier than the other side did. The other side was a real pain. Highly recommend using the right tools for the job, guys. I, I, I get lazy sometimes. Boy, that thing is hot, golly. Whoo! Uh, <laughs> use the right tools for the job. It, it should make your life a lot easier. Um, I literally had to chase that part down. The local dealer didn't have it. I had to drive all the way out and had to, and I ended up driving the Chevy truck, uh, the Chevy 3500. And we got the new throttle body installed on it. But I think we got the wrong throttle body because it's a Frankenstein truck. Uh, the throttle body for 94 and 95 is completely different from anything from 93 and before. So I think I got the wrong throttle body because I automatically, in my head, I was thinking it's a 94. I put in 94. I think it's got an older engine in it than 94. But it made the trip 30-some miles on the interstate there and back, but it died on me countless times at stoplights. It's embarrassing. It, blah, 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 blah. She, she's a little rough. But this is not about the Chevy 3500. I know how much y'all are hating that truck right now, and that's fine. I completely understand. I'm not mad at you for it. We're here to deal with the cruise. We got the brakes done. I'm going to do a quick bleed on the brakes. We're gonna put the wheels back on and hopefully, hopefully 
this thing runs and drives and uh, we can get it back on the Toro platform. Then we can order some body parts and, and go through putting, I'll probably do a front bumper and the rear bumper and the hood, get the windshield replaced, give it a good detail. Um, I think this car is gonna be great. I think this car will last a while longer. So I'm just happy to have all this work done because we have now done the front pads, the front rotors, the rear drums, the rear shoes. Everything is greased up properly. We got the front lower control arms replaced. This thing should be ready to go back on the road. Hopefully it'll be a solid, reliable car that can make me some more money and get me even more importantly to making me a few dollars from Toro is the mileage deduction to help offset all those taxes I have to pay Uncle Sam next year. So with that, I want to say thank you folks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget, if you're not following me on Instagram, jump on over to Instagram, follow me, and that is Auto Auction Rebuilds. I'd, I'd certainly appreciate and You're going to see stuff going on on Instagram like uh, car reveals and things. Uh, sometimes three to five days before you're going to see the cars revealed here on YouTube. So it's kind of like a sneak peek for you guys. Doesn't cost you anything. Just go over to Instagram, follow me, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Stay safe out there, everybody. Don't forget to drop those comments below. Let me know what you think. And I'm sure there's going to be several of you that tell me how I did this wrong or that wrong. That's fine. I'm always open to your opinions and your ideas. Stay safe out there, everybody. Until next time, I will catch you very soon in the next one. I don't even think that made sense.